Hello everyone, FPS Chasley here, and welcome back to the third installment of my tutorial series. Today we'll be covering the Periscope. Yes, the Periscope. Um, the periscope is, uh, it can be pretty important, but, um, I'll get to that later. Uh, it can be, it's a, it can be a pretty integral part of, uh, figuring out what's going on, getting intel, um, and figure out what ships are doing. If you have, like, nothing else from a ship besides sonar info, using Periscope can... Um, quickly increase your ability to get a good solution without having to make a lot of turns. Uh, but that's a sonar and TMA thing that we'll get to later. But yeah, periscope can make it. You can obviously you can figure out the range and course of a ship, so you can pretty much get a solution for any ship, if a surface ship at least, using the periscope. So let's get into it. Uh, F8. This is the periscope screen from the quick menu. It's also this reticule right here. Um, I'm already at periscope depth. I'm actually four feet shallower than the Los Angeles' periscope depth because the sea is a little rough as shown here and I want to make sure that uh, the periscope clears the waves. So uh, yeah, in heavier sea states you can actually have the issue that the uh, that um, you have to race so far up the water to not be uh, to not have your periscope underwater all the time that um, you might actually get your sail bridge exposed for a little bit but that's like really heavy sea states that's like hard difficulty quick mission stuff so as you can see right here we got a surface surface ship on the horizon so let's zoom in to check it out we got ourselves a Kirov cruiser oh yeah this is a big kahuna um, prob it's like a like the, the Russian fleet pride and joy basically the Kirov cruiser right here um, it's got it's nuclear powered and it's got a crap ton of cruise missiles and three helicopters so it's not something to be um, dismissed, and it's a uh, it's pretty big. I think right now it's around five nautical miles away, and uh, look how big it appears in our periscope at 16 times zoom. It's crazy. All right, so let's get to it. I'm going to show you how to how to do the periscope. So what you can do at first here is just um you just mark, and uh, you'll just get one of these um ambiguous little uh, VO, v, uh, v contacts here, and this basically is like the same as the sonar contact that we'll see eventually. Um, it just shows that the, the contact is there. All it conveys here is bearing. It may look like it's conve conveying range, but it's not. If this line, if there's a line here to the contact, that means it's not conveying range. It is only conveying bearing, so remember that. Uh, v for visual, and this is the third one because I've just been messing around with this before I started recording, just testing some things. So, uh, so we have the bearing. So, if you wanted to, you could take a, another mark here, and uh, using that, you can get some bearing info to try and work out a solution based on purely bearing info. Um, but that takes too much time, and there's no point when you have a feature like that, like a, I'm about to show the statimeter. Um, I already have a picture in here, but I'm about to show you guys how to use this. Basically, you take a picture, and knowing the geometry of the ship, you can use a trigonometry to figure out how far it is and what its course is. But first, to do that, you need to take a photo. And what do you want to do? Um, the manual says you have to. Uh, this is the way you should do it, but you don't have to. They tell you to put the horizontal line here at the water line of the ship, um, but I prefer not to. Uh, I like to do it this way so that the water line is not impeded by this line here because this line kind of has like some thickness to it and at really far ranges um, being off by that little bit can make a huge difference in what range you think you're seeing so I like to do it this way and uh, you want to make sure the tallest mast is very near to the center line of this so go ahead and take a photo here it'll freeze for a little bit showing you it took the photo and then we'll come here to the statimeter screen so uh, first um, the Los Angeles is really bad at this here. Let me just get this all back to normal here. Alright, the Los Angeles is really bad about this because you have to go through each individual ship. On the Akula and I believe the Seawolf, you can classify this down to country first, which makes it so much easier to find ships in here. I'm going to go ahead and pause this actually. Um, but with the LA, you have to go through every single freaking uh, ship that you can see here. I believe this was going to start out on either Sacramento or Supply by default. Kirov, thankfully, is very close. It's a few clicks to the left here. Kirov, if you want to pronounce it more correctly. So, uh, yeah, we, uh, this gives us the silhouette window down here, and this is what we're going to use to match up to this up here to employ our trigonometry. Okay, so first, um, 
Let's see, do we want to do range or, or bearing first? Let's do, uh, not bearing, course. Let's do course first. All right, so what you're going to have, this is kind of tricky, and I'll show you why in a second. What you're going to have to do is you're going to match up the silhouette with what we see in the picture here. And uh, knowing its um, orientation relative to our ship, you can determine what its course is using, again, trigonometry. Um, this is outlined in the manual, but I know most people are visual learners, so just showing this will, will really help to hammer it home on how you have to do this. So uh, depending on the lighting, this can be really hard to, to do. So uh, let's just try it first. Okay, so we want to turn it to the starboard, I believe. Yes. Um, when you click port or starboard, it moves the, the bow. It rotates the bow of the ship towards port or starboard. Starboard is right when you're looking down the axis of the ship. Starboard is to the right. Port is to the left. So if you turn it to the starboard, it turns the bow of the ship to the starboard. So that's a, a way. To, it, it doesn't really matter. I mean, you can just figure it out by clicking. So what we have to do here is match up, match up these aspect ratios. Uh, this is AOB silhouette angle on bow, and it basically just shows. Uh, what does it show? I guess it shows. So I guess zero is looking at the ship from the front, and then changing the angles like this just shows what angle you're looking at the ship. So right here at the left, we're looking at it from the port, directly from the port, 90 degrees. So uh, yeah, there you go. And it'll the starboard 90 degrees is on the other side of the ship. OK, so I've had trouble with this before in one of my quick missions. If you've seen it, I think it was quick mission 5 when I was off the east coast. Uh, I got the angle on the carrier very wrong. Because when you're at this level of zoom, here, I'll show you. Um, this is probably about the right. Um, angle on bow here. Uh, since, as you can see, the silhouette window, the camera is a lot closer to the ship. This is an optical thing that you get when you zoom in. On Up here in the video capture window, since it's so far away and we're zoomed in, it almost has no 3D perspective to it, which is called an orthogonal view. So it's it looks like it's like, if you didn't see that this little part here was like shaded, it looks like it's just a shorter keer off that's facing directly towards us. It doesn't look like it's turned. Um, so you need to look for some telltales to tell you that it's turned here. Let me try and adjust the mic because I'm really close to the screen. <laughs> so uh, if you look back here, you can see that there's a little line right here, and this is the uh, the stern of the boat. This is this part right here. Uh, you can tell from the different lighting, and then this is the uh, the side of the ship going all the way up to the front. And then up here, you can see there's a little bit showing here. Um, these are supposed to be perpendicular to the long axis of the ship. So uh, using that, you can tell. Just by looking at this here, seeing your, you know, it, the the this main mast here is about symmetrical, so we can see just about the same face here that we can on the side. So it's pretty much telling us it's just about, you know, 45 degrees um, from a 45 degree perspective, which would be port 145. So if you you can try and zoom this out a little bit to try and get it more orthogonal looking, and uh, as you can see, it does kind of it does appear to match up a little bit, but it's just really hard to tell. Um, which is why I'm not the biggest fan of how they portray the silhouette window. I mean, all the, I mean, you know, 99% of the time you're going to be looking at ships that are so far away that you're going to be getting this almost orthogonal perspective. So why wouldn't the silhouette window have the orthogonal perspective too? But uh, yeah, so I'm just trying to help you out with some tips here that the uh, the manual doesn't really mention here. This is just stuff I've come across in my travels. All right, so we got this lined up just about just about right here. So I'm going to go over this procedure from the uh, from the manual. All right, so first, uh, this is starting at step six in this section, if you want to know. Um, we have to determine the reciprocal of the bearing to the contact shown in the bearing readout. Uh, bearing readout is not shown here, so we need to go back to the, to the main screen. Reciprocal is basically just the opposite way that it's, it's, uh, it's pointing. Uh, this is just part of the procedure. So uh, you want to find this from the middle of the ship. It's at bearing 142. Uh, and then to find the reciprocal of this bearing, if the value in the bearing readout is 0 to 180, which it is, we add 180. However, if the bearing readout was 180 to 360, we subtract 180. But this is this is in the range 0 to 180, so we are going to add 180. So the reciprocal of this bearing is 322. Two. So let's go back to the statimeter screen. If the contact has port aspect, which it does, add the number in the angle on bow window to the reciprocal. So we will do that. We will add 145 to 322. Okay, so now I know what you're thinking. We're getting a number greater than 360 degrees. Well, they, they have a, a way to handle that. Um, 
Oh, also for step for the step we just did, if the contact is a starboard ask, actually subtract the number in the AOB window from the reciprocal. Okay, so moving on to the next step, if the resulting number is greater than zero and less than 360, this number is a good approximation of the course of the contact. It is not. So move on to the next step. If the number is greater than 360, subtract 360. The resulting number is a good approximation of the contact's course. So let's subtract 360 from the angle in the bow that we got of 145 added to the bearing reciprocal, which is 322, which gives us a, uh, a, a number of 467. This is greater than 360, so we're going to subtract 360 from that number, and you get 107. The, this resulting number is a good approximation of the contact's course, 107. Uh, there's also another one. If the number is less than zero, you add 360 to it, and then you have another good approximation. So we have determined that this the, the ship's course is about 107. So I'm just going to make a note of that here. So we got 107. Very good. And then, uh, okay, so we'll, we might as well just check that at this point. So uh, I don't think I marked this here. Well, it's okay, so if, if you mark and you haven't done anything else, it's still just going to give you this bearing thing. Let me show you how to do range now, too. All right, so the procedure in the book is to have it like this, uh, a clear view of the water line. And what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to go from the, you're supposed to, you can drag these windows. So you want to click at the top of the tallest mast and drag it down to the water line so it, they match up. And that'll that'll give you the supposed range. You have to okay. It gives us the range readout. It says it as five three three four yards. Five three three four yards. Now using our quick conversion factor of approximately two thousand yards per every one nautical mile, this means that it's two it's two and two thirds nautical miles away. So two point six seven nautical miles away. All right. So let's uh, let's check on these numbers. All right. So we did not mark the range. So you want to make sure you mark it because then it'll put it into the computer as a at the correct range. Okay, this is slightly different, it's not a big deal. Okay, so now there's no more bearing line to this contact, so that signifies that we know range to the target. And it has it listed as about six thousand yards. That's kinda of interesting because I have it listed as fifty five hundred here, but it puts six thousand there. Whatever, that's fine. Um, so let's uh let's go ahead and check. I'm gonna turn the truth on. As you can see it's really a lot further away. So before we actually get to the to checking, I'm gonna just uh, bring up my gripes here with the with the statimeter. For some reason, it doesn't. The top of the tallest mass has never really worked out for me, um, and I haven't found a way to. I haven't found a uh, you know, the back of your hand kind of way to figure out uh, a fix for this because it, it it varies from ship to ship. And in my messing around, I found out that it was actually at the top of this mass for the Kira off here that most closely approximated the uh, the actual range of the Kira off here. So if we go back to this, you can see that's a little closer, but it's still not really right. But in terms of a torpedo solution, that's probably good enough in terms of range. But you know, it's just kind of it's kind of gimmicky. You know, why is it so uh, different? than like what the procedure outlines uh, it's just so like if I get it down to what it actually is like supposed to be I think this is actually pretty close right here um, yeah that's about just on the money but if you look at it what is that in relation to it's not the top of anything well maybe the tippy top of this little mast here instead of like the base that I was doing earlier that seems to be more in line but how are you supposed to be like oh well just don't use the tall the top of the tallest mast use the top of the second tallest mast so Use the statimeter range finder with a grain of salt. The course, the course predictor is as good as you can um, approximate the uh, the angle on the bow here. Um, that works fine, but the range finder, I would take it with a grain of salt. Um, basically, I would just do, I would just mark bearings, and then we can use the TMA layer to help us figure out a solution for that. But that's for later. I mean, the range it gives you a good approximation. And then uh, once you have a good approximation nailed down, you can mess with the solution later. But that's that's stuff we'll get into later, and I'll, I'll bring it back up once we get into that. But uh, let's check out the course and see if we were right on that. Course is 100. Hey, you know, that's not bad. We had 107, 100. Uh, that's a pretty good approximation right there. So, uh, yeah, see, that uh, that worked out pretty well. Um, uh, if you want me to, uh, I'll probably end up putting these directions in the description. 
or um, I'll, I'll, I'm going to write them out in the video as we go along, but you would have seen that already. So let's return here to the main Periscope screen and unpause it. And I'm going to show you how to use the ice thickness display. So um, I'll be right back. All right, we're back. Uh, we're in the USS Cheyenne this time. And uh, I'm going to show the ice thickness display. So what you're going to want to do is raise the scope up again. Uh, we're very far north. This is Greenland. And uh, I set the, the, the game's uh, month to February to make sure there's a good chunk of ice that we go to the main map here. We got, look on the bottom left, we got 97% ice coverage. Uh, I think that's similar to how, never mind, I'm not going to go into that. 97% ice coverage. I don't really know what it means. I'm not going to speculate. <laughs> All right, so right here, this is the ice thickness display. If we click on this, we get this cool little uh, screen here. You need to have the periscope up. It's an upward looking camera. The way it works is it judges how much sunlight is coming through the ice. This obviously won't really work at night. Um, and what you need to use this for is to find out places where you want to surface the sub. Now this isn't really that critical of a thing to do, but I figure I just might as well go, go over it. Uh, you don't really deal with ice in any of the default missions of this game, I don't think. But uh, it's just worth noting. So over here on the signal strength, um, this tells you if you're good to go in terms of um, surfacing. So I believe right here these two, maybe three bars, uh, sorry, I'm colorblind. These two, maybe three bars are green, and that means the ice is between zero to four feet thick, or approximately one to one and a, or approximately zero to one and a half meters thick, and that means that we're, we're good. We can service that, no damage. The yellow bars indicate that we have ice thickness of four to eight feet, approximately 1.5 to uh, three meters thick, and that means, you know, no good. Uh, well, not really no good, but you could do it if you had to, but you might damage some sensors. And then the red here is 8 feet or thicker, or 3 meters or thicker, and this is no good. Uh, you service this, you're going to get massive damage, you might get flooding. Uh, don't do it. So, um, yeah, I think that concludes our Periscope tutorial. Never mind, one last thing, ESM indicator. <laughs> Alright, so uh, this is um, similar to the same scale in the ice thickness thing. You get green down here, yellow, and then red. Uh, red means very strong, and green means very faint. Um, based on my experiences, this does not um, turn on based on what bearing you're looking on, but only if you're getting, only if radio mag only if electromagnetic radiation is crossing your periscope. Uh, that's the only thing that's needed for this to light up. It's not bearing; it doesn't reflect bearing. Just as long as you're getting ESM, this will light up. And uh, one more thing, you can also change this to LLTV, low light TV mode. It's not really night vision. It's uh, it is night vision but it's not like thermal vision so I it's sometimes it's really not the not that much better but I, I mean if you're at night you don't really have a choice you might as well use it but uh yeah that's the periscope so thanks for watching everyone um uh tune in for the next episode we'll do fire control i decided not to do fire control in this episode because periscope was going to be pretty lengthy i think they deserve their own videos otherwise it's just going to be too much stuff so um yeah i'll see you guys then thanks for watching